Uh, uh, okay, on a real note, does this weapon need an introduction? We're going over the Unkempt Herald. In today's video of the Borderlands Retrospective series, we're going to tell you guys how it probably became one of the most iconic weapons in Borderlands history and how, specifically, it took over Borderlands 2. But before I double penetrate myself into today's video, I want to bring up the channel's partner, Instance Gaming. If you guys are looking for really cheap games for Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and even PC, check out the link in the description below to get games for really, really cheap. You guys have been buying Borderlands for really cheap. All these other games that I probably should try out myself for really, really great prices. 100% legit website. I've been using them for years. But hey, if you want the games you love at the prices you love, Instant Gaming has got you guys covered. Oh my, oh my, where do I begin with the Unkempt Herald? Originally dropped by by Savage Lee. We all know Savage Lee. We farmed him plenty of times in our Borderlands playtime, and he drops the Unkempt Herald, but it can be obtained through other sources, such as the Torg vending machines from the Campaign of Carnage DLC. And if for some reason you're not caught up to speed on what the Unkempt Herald is, it is a Torg legendary pistol that shoots a crap ton of projectiles. The red text reads, did I just fire six shots or only five? Three? Seven? Whatever. What that really means is it fires three shots in a accelerating pattern similar to too many other accelerating weapons a lot of the torg weapons do this you are shooting so many projectiles which deal explosive damage that anything in the game pretty much gets deleted now many people use this with salvador it's literally his main squeeze it's his iconic weapon of choice because with the grog nozzle you'd have infinite damage with infinite healing infinite slag you're not going to really die with the unkempt herald in the grog nozzle combo but you could get even more damage out of this gun if you use the lady fist to crit swap with it and that's what a lot of people do even today people are using that with many different different glitches on even Salvador and Axton. Axton could also benefit from the Unkempt Herald due to his explosive damage benefits, but not only that, a lot of people do switch from the Herald to another weapon on Axton to deal increased damage via weapon merging. Because Axton's swap speed is so fast, it's basically the equivalent of holding a second gun like Salvador can, just with some extra steps. Oh yeah, did, did, did I mention Salvador has specific skills that boost pistol damage and it double dips? Oh, oh I didn't? Well now you know. But honestly, the projectile speed could be a blessing and a curse, but luckily there's other Vault Hunters that could boost a projectile projectile speed like Maya and Zero. This is kind of a good thing depending on what you're doing if you want the more projectile spread so it's easier to hit things at range. But as I can see in the footage here, when you're going against something like Saturn, it doesn't really matter all that much. But if you want to be more precise with the Herald, I would definitely recommend running it on said Vault Hunters. Honestly, you could be playing Gage of all people and still make the Unkempt Herald very, very good. Another beautiful thing about the Unkempt Herald, it's not so much used today in modern Borderlands 2, but because it does have unlisted projectiles, any amp shield will get 100% benefit. So for example, if you were going to use a B shield with the Unkempt Herald, every unlisted projectile would gain 100% of the shield's amp damage, which I don't know why a lot of people don't know this. I made another video in this series about the B shield's history specifically. I don't want to repeat myself, but you can definitely check that out in the top right, right about now. And uh, yeah, now of course I can't do these episodes without a little bit of term X trivia. Both the name of the gun and the flavor text are references to the 1971 movie Dirty Harry. Now, I did read that from the wiki. I'm not going to lie to you, but Dirty Harry is something I've actually watched before. It is Clint Eastwood. Very, very good movie. It's old. It's from the 70s, but I highly recommend if you're older in my audience, you probably already know what this movie is and you understand the reference immediately. But I think it's kind of badass that the badass gun of Borderlands 2 is referenced with a badass person like Clint Eastwood. Really great movie. Highly recommend you go watch it. But after the first shootout scene in that movie, when his gun is at the bank robber and he says, now I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? I know what you're thinking. Six shots or only five. The gun's pattern is 357 in reference to the 357 Magnum cartridge that was introduced in the Magnum era. Now, before we go even further to this rabbit hole of nameage, the Fragnum is the name of the Uncamped Herald in the pre-sequel, which is ironic because we're using Magnum references and 357 caliber references. Now, in the pre-sequel with the 88 Fragnum, it is very similar, but also not as good. It fires five bullets at once in an accelerating spread, very similar to the original Herald, doesn't increase the additional projectile 
Files, which they basically dumbed down what made the Herald the Herald and just kind of put it in for old times sake. Same exact texture as the Borderlands 2 Uncamped Herald. So to each of their own, I wish they would have cleaned it up a little bit, maybe put in some green because it kind of fits the pre-sequel, but it was basically just a shotgun pistol. Now, because the pre-sequel is so great, I'm pretty sure in the pre-sequel you couldn't get this from a specific drop source. I'm 99.99% sure that the only way to get it is just through random drops. But I will say the main takeaway is when you're using the Uncamped Herald in Borderlands 2, you kind of have to gauge the distance. And if your accuracy is higher in Borderlands 2, you want to use it at a longer range because higher accuracy on the Uncamped Herald will make it so the spread happens later rather than sooner. The opposite is true when it comes to the 88 Fragnum from the pre-sequel. Treat that more like a shotgun and point blank everyone. You could do range with some accuracy bonuses, but it's highly recommended. Just pretend it's a shotgun pistol and you'll have a lot of fun. If you want another Termex trivia fact of the day, do you remember Tales from the Borderlands? Not, not, not the shitty one, the good one. The good one that, that eh, they're making a book about. Finch, which is one of the main antagonists in Tales from the Borderlands, actually uses the Unkempt Herald himself. A little bit cool fun fact there if you guys did not know. Figured out throw that in because Finch was always a badass in my opinion and god, I really wish the second game was a, a sequel to the first one. It was so good. And finally, we go into probably the worst variation of the Unkempt Herald, which was the one from Borderlands 3 where the red text reads, I wasn't counting either. Basically just playing on words from the same thing that I've talked to you guys about in this video. And unfortunately, the thing about the Uncamped Herald in Borderlands 3 is it had so much potential. Borderlands 3 introduced the sticky projectiles when it came to Torg weapons, exponentially increasing all their damage across the board with shotguns, pistols. If you remember the craps pistol from Borderlands 3, that was also really good. But it's very unfortunate. You take a fan favorite weapon and kind of dumbed it down. It wasn't really played the same. It did actually have the splitting projectile, so that came back, but the damage was just not enough. It also got a 100% damage buff at some point in the Borderlands 3 life cycle through the nerf apocalypse and the buff apocalypse, I guess you could say, and it still was not very good. Every other pistol out there was just better, and if you wanted an explosive pistol that was better, go get a craps. So it's, it's the same thing, but 10 times better. So even with the gyro jet and allowing for the first time in Borderlands history for the Unkempt Herald to roll in any elements, that is actually insane. The fact you could have any elements on an Uncamped Herald in Borderlands 3 and it was still bad. If you told that to my younger self in 2012 saying, imagine the Uncamped Herald could be fire. I, I, I would think you're lying that you would tell me it would be worse. But if you're actually curious where to get the Uncamped Herald from Borderlands 3, it does drop from Kaber Dowd over in the Blood Sun Canyon. And I believe it is the mission most wanted. And before I get yelled at in the comments, well, there's other, that, that's not the only bad explosive pistol, the Crafts, the Devastator, the Devil's Foursome, the Echo, uh, what else? Uh, not the Moonfire. I won't put the Moonfire on here, but the Critical was really good. And it, that, that's really the only other Torque pistols I could think of right now. So after all this information and trivia about the history of the Uncamped Herald term, how did this impact Borderlands in such a large way? Well, the gun itself was just so fun to use and so easy to obtain from early on that your playthroughs were pretty much trivial. Regardless of what character you're playing, if you were stuck at a boss, if you were stuck with a build, if you were stuck at a certain section, you were under leveled, the Uncamped Herald was there to save you. I'm down five levels because I'm rushing the campaign. Let's go farm Savage Lee. They just abducted Tiny Tina, but the only way to get her back is to murder James Bond. Go farm Savage Lee. Now, this could bring a negative light over into the Uncamped Herald, understandably so, because it kind of ruined the game in some ways. I'm not going to say one gun ruined the game because uh, avoidably you could just not farm for it. The only thing that kind of sucked is they kept it in such a manner that there wasn't any other explosive pistols in the game that could really compete with it. I go over to Borderlands 3 where I talk about the craps, the breeder. Pistols like that are in the same category of competition, but in Borderlands 2 you had maybe the Maggie and nobody really used non-elemental bullet weapons later on in the games, especially with ricochet mechanics. And I can't really think of an explosive pistol right now that comes anywhere near close to the Uncamped Herald. Maybe my mind is wandering and I'm just missing the obvious, but let me know in the comments down below if you could think of any other good explosive pistol in Borderlands 2. But I want to get some more community reception because going over into Reddit, there's a lot of comments of people saying the Uncamped Herald was too good, and that's honestly understandable. It did carry a lot of builds, though it wasn't the only way to play Borderlands 2. It was fun. But then I stumbled across this Reddit thread about nine years ago of this guy simply saying, I hate the Uncamped Herald. I hate it in the sense that it's such a good weapon that I often feel obligated to use it over weapons that I have more fun with. And I think Borderlands 2 very, very much so suffered from this due to the fact that a lot of weapons that were cool because they were unique or they had a nice little Easter egg to them, they were cool and fun to use. And I'd love that about Borderlands games. But the sad truth is 99.9% .9 of the time, those cool items and gear, though they are fun to use, happen to be the worst gear in the game. And this is the thing where I want to talk about a little bit about obligation. Obligation in Borderlands when it comes to gear, it's like, 
I could use this, but why would I? This has been present in every single Borderlands game, but I think it's just heavily amplified by Borderlands 2. Not to say Borderlands 3 didn't have its fair share of a uh, fair share of things you could just use and beat the game. But I think that's part of what made Borderlands 2 so fun. You had these crazy overpowered guns that did crazy shit. You could amplify it more through the character's mechanics and the grog nozzle giving us access to multiple projectiles on top of the multiple projectiles already built into the Herald, just made for a lot of fun and mayhem. In the harsh truth about the unkempt Herald, it was way ahead of its time. It was the pistol to kill all pistols. It did the damage. There was no really major downfall with this unless you're shooting an explosive resistance enemy, which was very rare in Borderlands 2, but it had the fire rate, it had the damage. It kind of had the less ammo consumption if you were Salvador. You didn't really care about ammo to begin with, but this pistol, though it may be such an old weapon and such a remnant of what once was throughout the game's history, this pistol was never really done justice ever since Borderlands 2. It's either been dumbed down or just borderline not even usable, but I will never forget the memories I personally had with the Unkempt Herald playing on my Xbox 360 with my buddies, farming it in a co-op lobby and waiting for those long-ass load times, and uh, yeah, this pistol holds a special place in my heart for me, and I imagine for the majority of the Borderlands community. Let me know your stories with the Unkempt Herald in the comments down below. I read every single one of them. If you want to check out more episodes in the Borderlands Retrospective series, I have a whole playlist on my channel where I go over gears, guns, items, characters in the Borderlands series. If you want to support the channel, it means a lot if you leave a like on this video and go check out a few of those. You guys have a terrific day. Stay safe. If you want to see more Borderlands content from me, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all later. I'm a little underground